Next on AM 1480 WLEA, The Amy McManus Show. Welcome to the Amy McManus Show on AM 1480 WLEA. Happy Thanksgiving week to you all. Uh, Out of Albany this week, Governor Patterson submitted emergency legislation, the executive authority option, that grants the executive branch the one-time authority to administratively direct the reduction of the 2009-2010 fiscal year payments in order to close a $3.2 billion current budget gap. This measure would provide a critical tool to help protect the state's finances during an unprecedented fiscal crisis, EmpireNews.com says, which was partly caused by a dramatic decline in revenues. Governor Patterson announced the legislation in a web address directly to New Yorkers, saying the executive authority option, quote, would give me as governor a one-time authority to close the current year budget deficit, to maintain New York's strong credit rating, and keep our state afloat. I want to make clear that this is not a cash flow problem that can be fixed with one-shot deals or creative accounting. This is a lack of cash crisis that threatens the financial stability of our state. Unless we take action, the state will run out of money, unquote. For seven weeks, he added, I have tried to persuade the legislature to face this reality, and so far, the legislators remain unwilling to acknowledge the severity of this crisis or do what must be done. The people of New York have waited long enough. So our governor is basically going to uh, come in with the hatchet, and he's going to decide what needs to get cut and what's going to stay. Uh, And the legislators uh, got what's coming to them, I think. Also in New York, up in uh, District 23, Conservative Party candidate Doug Hoffman uh, has conceded again to Democrat Bill Owens. He had unconceded, I know that's not a word, but that's the word they're using, uh, on Glenn Glenn Beck's radio program a couple of weeks ago because it became clear uh, that the margin of his loss had shrunk to 3,000 votes after re-canvassing as well as the fact that 10,000 absentee ballots had not been totaled. He knew it was a long shot but wanted to fight to the bitter end anyways. TalkingPoints.com quotes Hoffman as saying that the secret to winning in 2010 is to start laying the groundwork early. Next time, he says, we will be better prepared. He also suggests he'll run on the Conservative Party ticket rather than make run for the GOP nomination. No surprise there. He also says the key to victory is for national supporters of Hoffman to take the movement back to their own congressional districts. There's more to do than just win back New York 23 in 2010. He says, we must work to help other like-minded citizen candidates, I like that word, citizen candidates, win across the country. We need to make time to help other candidates who are working for the principles we hold dear, other fiscal sense, common sense conservatives. Together we can successfully take back our great nation one legislator and one member at a time. We need more than one conservative voice in the echo chamber of liberal spendthrift concophony if we are to redirect our great country. So, in spite of the wishes of some Democrats and Republicans uh, to to just make him disappear, Doug Doug Hoffman is not uh, stepping back, and he's going to remain active on the political scene in District 23. Uh, Other state news in Camden, New Jersey, attorneys with the Alliance Defense Fund filed a lawsuit on behalf of a student against the Bridgeton Board of Education after officials at Bridgeton High School prohibited the student from expressing a religious viewpoint, they say, on the sixth annual Pro-Life Day of Silent Solidarity. The student was prohibited from participating in the Stand True Ministries-sponsored event by distributing pro-life literature during non-instructional times and wearing a red armband with the word life written on it. School officials told the student that nothing religious is allowed in public schools, even though it was clear to everyone there was absolutely nothing religious about the event. Pro-life students shouldn't be discriminated against for expressing their beliefs, said ADF Senior Legal Counsel David Cortman. The Pro-Life Day of Silent Solidarity is a non-disruptive, student-led event occurring outside of instructional time. The event provides the opportunity for students to exercise their constitutional right to express their viewpoint on abortion, just as other students have the right to express their views. Government-run schools say that students need to be educated on these issues, but many times they only want to allow one side to be presented. In similar news, I'm going to be interviewing a young woman uh, next week uh, by the name of Natalie Full. She's a college student in charge of a pro-life club at uh, McGill University in Montreal. Uh, The Student Society Legislative Council of that university is trying to shut her down because they say her club is, quote, contrary to the safety and well-being of students 
and that by allowing such a group to book campus space, the SSMU is, quote, providing legitimacy to the anti-choice agenda. Furthermore, it states that Choose Life, her group, has distributed untrue information, quote, with the atten- intent of manipulating students into viewing abortion as harmful to one's health. Manipulating students into thinking abortion is harmful. Uh, it will require a two-thirds affirmative vote for this, this junction to pass. The SSMU Constitution states that the student society commits itself to groups, programs, and activities that are devoted to the well-being of a group disadvantaged because of irrelevant personal characteristics that include but are not limited to race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, sex, gender identification, age, mental or physical debility, sexual orientation, or social class. Natalie Foe maintains that Choose Life's own mandate, quote, to promote respect for life and human rights from conception, defined by the moment of, civil, of fertilization, makes it clear that Choose Life is one such group. We seek to affirm the dignity of all human beings and to challenge the injustice facing unborn persons, a group arbitrarily denied value, rights, and life solely because of their age. We're going to talk to her next week and find out what the status is of her group. I hope you, I hope you tune in. In other news regarding human life, according to LifeNews.com, a pro-life legal group has asked the United States military, military to charge Nidal Hassan with the unlawful killing of an unborn child in that shooting that recently took place at Fort Hood. The initial 13 murder charges do not include one for the death uh, of an unborn child, the 14th victim. Has anybody uh, out there heard any newscaster or, or reporter refer to the number as 14? Bet you haven't. Of course not. ADF issued a letter Thursday to the Office of Staff, Staff Judge Advocate at Fort Hood, Texas, urging it to enforce the law by bringing that 14th charge. It wants Hassan to be held responsible for the killing of both Francesca Velez and her unborn child. The letter reads, all murder victims born and pre-born deserve equal justice. This comes from Senior Legal Counsel of ADF, Stephen Aiden, who told this to Life News. He says, women who volunteer to protect our country deserve to know that the government will enforce the laws that protect their children. Here's the interesting part of this story and why I don't understand why we're not hearing more about this. The, the ADF letter is basically just encouraging enforcement of existing law. Article 119A of the Uniform Code of Military Justice uh, made it a crime for anyone to cause the death of a child who was in utero at the time the conduct takes place, regardless of whether the killer intended to kill that child. If the killer intended to kill the child, then he can be prosecuted for mur- murder under Article 118. So basically they just want them to enforce uh, the, the law in this case. Private Velez was three months pregnant, and reports say she was excited about being a new mom. She was scheduled to begin maternity leave this month. She was filling out paperwork relating to her pregnancy leave uh, when she and her child were killed. The letter continues, It would cause a severe and negative impact on morale if Army women were made to believe that the Army valued their children less than they did of adult victims of crime. We respectfully co- request that you enforce UCMJ Article 119A against suspect Hassan. The Uniform Code of Military Justice, uh, that particular code was modified when President George W. Bush uh, signed the Unborn Victims of Violence Act uh, in 2004. It's also known as Lacey and Connor's Law, the mother and unborn son who were killed uh, by Scott Peterson. It would seem, the letter continues, that the law applies in this case for three reasons. The act of violence was committed on federal property, the shooting was allegedly done by a member of the military, and the violence could be classified as an act of terrorism. Uh, Also, under Texas law that took effect in September of 2003, uh, the the protections of the entire criminal code are at their disposal, uh, which, because it says an unborn child at every stage of gestation from fertilization until birth, uh, shall not be murdered. It will be considered murder. Uh, I, I hope the, pay, the, the, the president is paying attention to this. Somehow I, I, I think not.